after the showdown in Spa, handshakes all round. Michael Schumacher and David Coulthard apparently patching up their differences. Behind the smiles, though, the rivalry remains as intense as ever, as McLaren and Ferrari fight it out for the Formula One spoils. Hello, welcome to Monza, as we review this afternoon's Italian Grand Prix. Now, this is always a pretty passionate occasion. They come with high expectations that their man can put home advantage to good effect. In round 14 of the World Championship, they want that world title back, and Michael Schumacher's determined to deliver. Qualifying torrential rain in the morning leads to a waiting game as the brilliant afternoon sunshine dries the track. And here's the grid after that hectic scramble. Michael Schumacher and Ferrari on pole at last. Best of 98 as well for the world champion Villeneuve and Williams. No McLarens on the front row, that really does make a change. Eddie Irvine alongside the younger Schumacher. Alexander Wurtz out qualifying Fissi Keller. Then a Lacey, the 97 pole sitter. Improvement from those Prosts, followed by the second Benetton and Williams. Barrichello Stewart, ahead of former Monza winners, Damon Hill and Johnny Herbert. Salo and Verstappen. Then it's the Tyrrells with Pedro Diniz in front of the Minardis, Nakano and Tuero. Electrical problems before the off result in Michael Schumacher starting in the spare. Mika Hakkinen using the spare McLaren as well. Settle back and enjoy the best of the Italian Grand Prix now with Martin Brundle and Murray Walker. Get ready then for action at Monza, the race which could almost decide the world championship. One light, it's going to be five, they'll go out and then the pause. The race will start and it starts now. Great start, great start from Hackett. Great start from Hackett, and he's through. He's past Schumacher and Coulthard. Terrible start for the Ferraris. Magnificent start for the McLarens. David Coulthard's done what he did last year. Is anybody going off at the Retifilio? It looks like it. Yes, that's Frenson going off, and one of the Minardis and one of the Pross following him through. But this is a magical start for the McLaren Mercedes. Both Hackett and David Coulthard through in front of the Ferraris, the worst thing that could possibly happen. Here's Schumacher Irvine coming up. Now that's, uh, well, let's wait and see. I thought it was Schumacher back there in fourth yeah, place. Schumacher, you're quite Taking right Villeneuve, so Schumacher putting a big move on Villeneuve into the second chicane, an important move. Now Irvine will get out of his way, and he can get after those McLarens if he's got the pace, but that was a worst-case scenario for Michael Schumacher. Yes, so it's Irvine third, watching Michael Schumacher. He'll let him through, I'm quite sure, as you say. But meantime, the gap between the two McLarens and the first Ferrari is increasing. And it's Irvine third. Schumacher is in fourth position. I hope Hakkinen didn't jump to start because I was watching him. He had a lightning getaway. He was right on the button. I think it was just a very good start, but Hakkinen certainly moved the first of all of the cars. Well, already a big, big lead as they go into the parabolic or on lap one out of 53. McLaren leads, McLaren second. This is the leader. It's Mika Hakkinen with David Coulthard behind him. And then the two Ferraris of Irvine and Schumacher. Now, this is the Retifilio coming up. Down through the gears from the sixth gear into second gear. And there they go. Now, look at the gap, you see. And look at the way Schumacher is crowding Irvine. To start again, watch Hakkinen's uh, second row look. Watch him get away. Tremendous getaway from Mika Hakkinen. And, uh, well, Jacques Villeneuve saved the day. Jacques Villeneuve just got out of his way. Hakkinen, very lucky not to have an accident there. Both McLarens flying off the line. And I think the green track, it's rained so heavily here, has hurt the tyres that Ferrari chose through all of the testing that went on there. Lots of cars going through the escape road into the first corner. No harm done. It's quite a smooth, hardened area through there. But meanwhile, the two McLarens looking blindingly fast. And is that Schumacher fast now? Yes, yes it, is. it is. While, while we were watching the replay, uh, Irvine has yielded to Schumacher. 
and uh, Schumacher now on his way. Uh, Ralph Schumacher, the man of the race so far for me, most certainly, is Damon Hill. And this looks, uh, it looks to me as though the McLarens are having a pretty serious race of it. And reminds me of uh, Mike of Andretti and Ronnie Peterson in 1978 in the two Lotus cars when they drove round in formation. And Ralph Schumacher is going. He's got the gap down to 3.6 seconds now. Is, is uh, Michael Schumacher in the Ferrari? There he is, third position, and he's catching the McLarens. The top 10 at the moment on lap 13, Coulthard, and the gap is 4.4 seconds between him and Hakkinen. Schumacher, that is Johnny Herbert off in the Sauber, and uh, out of the race, it looks to me. I think that's on the way into the parabolic, a bit of a wild guess, but Johnny's having a very poor run. He'll be rather pleased. He's got a seat secured at Stewart for next year. It's certainly not working well for him at the moment. Hakkinen, eight tenths slower than Coulthard on the last lap, and interestingly, one tenth faster than Michael Schumacher. Off backwards, replay second goes... Second Lesmo, actually. Just Johnny. down the braking in the second Lesmo, Murray. Yep. And the engine's clearly stalled. Look, the back wheels are grinding to a halt through the gravel trap. Johnny out of the race. Ready for Damon Hill. He's just passed fifth place man, Jack Villeneuve. I think we're about to see it. Yes, we are. Look, getting in the slipstream, pulling out to the right-hand side, obviously at the end of the pit straight. And uh, Damon, nice, clean move. Then he goes to cover the inside. Really professional stuff from Damon. But sadly, it looks like he's got to come in the pits for his first stop. And meanwhile, cool. Oh, that, that's a Minardi. That, that's Nakano, Shinji Nakano. But already the marshals are onto it. It looks like a bit of an oil fire. Perhaps a pipe's broken. The extinguishers go. And Shinji Nakano is out of the race, as already, of course, is... Johnny Herbert and Pedro Deniz. So three retirements out of the 22 who started. This two-stop strategy is looking a bit smart at the moment. Coulthard now into the 1 minute 25.9s. 1.5 seconds quicker than Hakkinen that time around in the same car. So Hakkinen lost a half a second to Michael Schumacher. Coulthard's car appears to be working better. Now it's a replay of uh, Nakano's Minardi and you can see the... Ford engine has let go in the biggest possible way, and indeed that is an oil fire, and it's very convenient that he stopped right by a marshal's post. Plenty of fire extinguishers. It's a lot more dramatic than it looks, but I wouldn't like to be there at all. And it's getting very close to push and shove for Michael Schumacher as the back of the McLaren steps out, just a whisker, going through the retifilio, round the Grand Curve, and they go round the Grand Curve at a, a, a terrific speed. Well, we now know... Ooh, Bang! That's big, what that's was Coulthard. that? That's Coulthard David blowing Coulthard. up. David Coulthard out of the race. Now, if that's happened to him... It's academic now, what strategy? Schumacher's going for the lead of the Rosier. And he's right up alongside and he's going through. Fantastic. Hackenden fights back. This is magnificent. The lead changes twice in about 400 yards. And Michael Schumacher leads the Italian Grand Prix. David Coulthard is out of it. His Mercedes engine has said, I've had enough, but Hackenden is not going to give up. And look at the oil on Hakkinen's camera. You assume he's got that on his... I think he lifted in all of that smoke of his teammate's blow-up more than Michael Schumacher did. Took his eye off the ball slightly, gave Hakkinen a run at him. He suddenly realised it into the second chicane. Tried to defend the line, went wide, and Michael said, thank you very much, I'll have plenty of that. And look at Eddie Irvine in the background as well, and just to add to the agony. And just listen, when they go past, listen to the Tifosi. There they are. They won't know. And there is David Coulthard trying to look inside. He's going to take the steering wheel off the car. And there is the Ferrari pit. And Michael Schumacher, for the first time, leads across the line. The scarlet flags wave. The Tifosi are overjoyed. Michael Schumacher leads for Ferrari in Italy. Another indication of the fact that in Formula One, anything can happen, and it usually does. And down Benetton. there is a Benetton now. Is it Alexander Woods or is it Giancarlo Fisichella? It's Woods, Alexander Woods. So we're down to 16 runners now. Be so careful with the speed limiter here because you have such an incredibly fast approach. Schumacher, calm, collected, parks the car exactly in the right position. The lollipop comes out, they'll turn it over, say select first gear, 
wait for the refueler, the wheels are on, no problem, go. 9.3 seconds coming in again. It's Hakkinen, isn't and it? And Mika Hakkinen comes in. Now, this is the stop that could decide the Italian Grand Prix. You watch Hakkinen, I'm going to watch the track because these. Michael Schumacher was 16 seconds behind him. It takes about 21 seconds from entry to exit. I haven't seen Michael Schumacher. Yes! Yes, he goes through. Michael Schumacher retakes the lead. And what is more, Barrichello goes through between Schumacher and Mika Hakkinen. Michael Schumacher is on lap 35 out of 53. 2.7 seconds behind Eddie Irvine's Ferrari. You just oh, saw it. Oh, Jack, Whoa. he got on the grass. Oh, right off goes Jack Fieldov. Slipped him once and now he's, got, he's out of the race. It was his fault entirely. He got on the grass in the first Lesmo uh, and but kept his boot in and then just turned into the second Lesmo as if nothing had happened, not allowing for the fact his rear tyre was dirty and then just lost it and had no way of recovering that car. Jack, that's down to you, my friend. Yes, uh, indeed it is. Fifth position last year. There's a replay. You see exactly what Martin described happening as he rockets through the gravel, which slows him up, but doesn't slow him up enough to prevent the nose of the car going into the tyres. Out of 53 now, coming through to complete the 44th lap, out of the Ascari turn, down to the Parabolica, turn in, let it run wide along that white line on the left-hand side, Accelerate away up to 200 miles an hour plus. Don't get involved in this motor race. A reasonable request, but it, it just smacks of all the wrong things. Yeah, but Chad oh, goes Hacken out. Hacken he's out. He's out. Get it in reverse, Mika. You'll just make it. Yes. This no, he's kept the engine running. Coverage. Careful now. Don't hurry it. Don't well, hurry it. Keep it under control. Spin it around. Don't let that engine go. And he's just, just kept it under control. Irvine's 31 seconds back, so it doesn't matter. He's still in a six-point position. He went through the gravel track backwards, so I don't expect he's got a hold radiator or any other kind of problem. I think he's just going to get away with that one. What a fantastic recovery, though. I've never seen one like that. Backwards through the gravel trap. He kept cool, got it in reverse, got it forward again, drove out, and the question now Here is... Here we go, look. He just got slightly on the white line on the way in as he started his braking and the back snapped away. And look, he's looking in his mirrors to see where it looks. He's correcting the car. Well done, Mika. You hit the reverse button there and just keep it going backwards. Now, be calm. It's easy to rush there. Look, it just caught him out. A touch too much rear bias. I think he was coming slightly off the white line anyway as he turned in. And that's the net result. Look, he's tight. his wheels are going backwards. Look. Very, very clever. Yes. Job. And the question is now, and no, I can't tell you what the answer is, no. where is Eddie Irvine in relation to Hakkinen? Well, Hakkinen lost 20 seconds. Uh, oh, he's gone straight over the chicane again. Come on, Mika. I don't know if he's got some kind of problem. I think his tyres are dirty. You saw the McLaren mechanics ready. They can't pull him in. He has to carry on if he can. Irvine is now 22 seconds, uh, 12, oh, 12 seconds, seconds, 12 seconds behind Hakkinen. Eddie Irvine finishes in second position. It would be an incredible... Here it is, look. Through. Eddie Irvine goes into second position. Magnificent for Ferrari, magnificent for Italy, terrible for McLaren. But I'm beginning to wonder now whether that problem that Mika Hakkinen's got is going to slow him yet more. R Ralph Schumacher is ahead of Mika Hakkinen. There he is. There is Ralph Schumacher in the Jordan. He's got past Mika Hakkinen. But uh, Hakkinen should finish fourth without any trouble because Jean Alesi, who is in fifth place, is some 17 seconds behind him. If he wins this race and he's only got half a mile or so to go, it is going to have been an app. Oh, and he's waving. Don't do that. Remember what Nigel Mansell did in Canada and he lost the race. But Michael Schumacher is not going to do it. Schumacher wins in Italy. Fantastic. Absolutely incredible. Wow. And Eddie Irvine finishes second. So it's maximum points for Ferrari. Ralph Schumacher should be home in third position, but is Jean Alesi going to have caught Mika Hacken? And I don't think so, there was too much between them. But uh, what a magnificent sight that is for Italy and the Tifosi of whom you have heard so much. Michael Schumacher's 33rd Grand Prix victory makes him level with Mika Hakkinen in the World Championship.
And that is something that no one would have forecast as Eddie Irvine crosses the line to finish in second place. And that's the second second place that Schumacher has had, uh, that Irvine has had this year. Ralph Schumacher just behind him, 3.1 seconds. And we still wait for Mika Hakkinen, and, uh, who now finishes fourth. So there are three points for Mika Hakkinen, and ten points for Michael Schumacher. The World Championship gap was seven points. Michael Schumacher has obliterated it. It's even Steven.